Hey y'all, um, I wanted to bring you out to the greenhouse with me today. Um, a few things I'm going to do today. I've got some sage that needs to be harvested, so I'm going to harvest that. And also, my I wanted to show y'all my mother plant of my basil that I have been letting go to seed. So I've already gotten some seed off of that and replanted those. And... I do have some sprouts coming up in this one this one and this one and my goal with these are I'm going to or my plans with these are I'm going to plant some for myself but I'm also going to take some of the seeds and replant enough so at the end of the season of our market season I hope to have some more like this big and I'm going to take these to the farmers market and um, and sell these at the market so that's my goal with this these seeds and I also need to um, be harvesting some sage so these are some plants that I started from seed um, in my gardener seed and they have grown and I'm not going to take a lot of these, but I'm going to take a few little snippings because when you harvest from your plants, it encourages growth. And you never want to take more than a fourth from your plant. So I'm going to encourage growth and take just a few snippings from some of these plants. And when I get finished harvesting my herbs, I've got to go in and start cooking supper. Now, a lot of my herbs that I harvest, I like to use in dishes like our baked pork chops, our baked chicken, um, any of, uh, anything just about that I, I slow cook. Uh, whether it be a roast in the crock pot or whatever, basil, parsley, sage, thyme, oregano, a lot of those are good on like your meats. Um, so I love to have those around and have those handy. Um, once after I harvest and I take some snippings off, I'm going to take these inside and I have actually a salad spinner. And I put my all of my herbs by each category. So I'll take all of my sage and put it in my salad spinner. All of my thyme, put it in the salad spinner next. And what I'll do is I'll fill it up with water. And I'll wash them off real good. And then I'll spin it around and get as much water off as I can. And then I'll take all the sage and I'll lay it on the sheet in my dehydrator. Then I'll do my time. I'll wash it off really well and I will spin it as much water as I can and then I will put that in my dehydrator and I'll leave my dehydrator on usually for about 24 hours maybe sometimes more maybe sometimes less it really just depends on what I'm dehydrating. Um, herbs are usually one, one to two days um, and then I will store them. I keep either old baby food jars or old jelly jars or whatever kind of glass jars and wash them out real good. And then uh, this plant right here, I believe is root bound. So I really need to give this thing some more room to grow. But anyway, I will store my herbs in a glass jar until I'm ready to use them and like I said any meats um, anything that I'm going to be slow cooking I'll just whip my herbs out and put it on those dishes and I absolutely love that um, later this afternoon we're going to be out in the garden picking peas so I'm going to gather up some of my herbs. I just did sage. I have some 
thyme here that I'm going to harvest off of. Um, a lot of these have grown a lot and are kind of outgrowing their pot. So I really need, we've been so busy with the garden, I really need to get a lot of these replanted. But So I'm going to harvest up my herbs and then we're going to go out um, once Colby gets home and we're going to uh, pick some peas in the garden. So y'all stay tuned for that. Alright guys, I decided to turn this thing back on. I started just cutting here and was thinking, I'm not, I want, there may be somebody out there that doesn't know how to harvest, so I just wanted to walk y'all through it. So this is my time, and I'm just going to cut some of this off. I mentioned earlier, don't ever take more than a fourth of your plant. So I'm going, I gave mine a, a good little haircut, and um, that encourages growth, like I mentioned earlier. So I'm done with this, I'm just going to grab, grab, grab the other one. And you'll see on this, I really haven't done much with these at all. Um, I really just kind of water them and, and feed them every now and then. So these pieces that are no good, or I say they're not any good, they've just gotten messed up or died or whatever. I'm just going to snip those little parts off. And then I'm going to take the ones that are good. I wish y'all could smell messing with these herbs. They smell amazing. So then I'm just going to come down here and I'm just going to cut. And it's, man, it smells so good. I wish you guys could smell how good this smells. So that's all I'm actually going to take off of this plant. Try to leave back as much of the stuff that looks like it has either gotten dried out or under some soil or just bent on here. Let's see, I'm gonna take one more sprig right here. And it's really just, mm, it smells so good. It's really just that easy. So never take more than a fourth of your plant. Very important. Oh, well, I'm, I'm thinking of it. This, I, this just came to my mind as I'm kind of picking this stuff out. My rosemary, I know I showed y'all my rosemary that I had dug up from the raised bed not long ago. I brought it in, repotted it, had really been trying to baby that thing back to life. Um, and it did not make it. It had to have been diseased somehow. I don't know if something got a hold of the roots and damaged the roots um, or whatever. If it was bug related or soil related. Um, but my big rosemary that I brought in here um, did not make it. Thankfully... I had taken clippings, and this is why I'm so glad I learned last year how to do this. Here are two of the clippings that I took from that plant. So even though I lost that plant, this one, this one, and I have another one over there are the exact makeup of what I had. I mean, they're just smaller, but they are the exact plant. So I'm so glad that I was able to do that. I'm going to go ahead and I've got a little bit more time to get and then I'm actually going to snip a little bit off of those too. Just a little bit to encourage, encourage growth on those. And I'm hoping that I did not ruin these plants. If it was disease related, disease related in the soil, I might have because I had the rosemary on top of my rack up there. And my thyme plants were directly under them, so the water was draining through through that into these. So I'm hoping that they they look to be okay. Maybe just waterlogged since the water was draining from the top on them. Um, I'm just gonna watch them. Take a little bit of this. They seem to be okay. Um, these, all of these are new except for, uh, this, the other, the very first one. That one I dug up from the ground. And these are new. I bought these because I thought I was going to lose my other one. It was in that raised bed that just doesn't do very well. Um, but it's actually doing amazing now. I, I was just going to go grab it, but I'm, I'm like starting to pour sweat. It's so hot in here. So, 
Um, these probably need to be repotted mm -hmm. soon too. Um, so I'm gonna, there are several, my upcoming jobs, I know I'm gonna have to put on my list is to come out and gather up a lot of my herbs and plants that are outgrowing their pots and get those replanted and give them some more room to grow because if you don't, I've noticed that a lot of times my plants will start to really struggle and suffer if those roots stay down and my plant is ready to grow. Um, a lot of times your plants will suffer from that. So rosemary, this is one I love to put on almost everything. So I'm going to take just a few snippings from these. You can take your stems to these if you have a bigger, more mature plant and you just don't know how to harvest it. Really all you need to do is just come down here and get a stem. Now I'm not going to take a lot of mine because I don't want to damage mine. I'm just taking enough snippings to encourage some growth. And once you dehydrate those, or you can put them, if you don't have a dehydrator, I found mine at a garage sale a few years ago for one whole dollar and I'm still using that. Um, because just we were not looking to invest a lot of money in it at the time. I didn't have a lot of herbs at the time. This was several years ago. So, um, anyway, I've also uh, been told that I could have taken a brown paper sack, put those herbs in it, wrap it up, put it in the trunk of your car, ride around through the summer in it, and it will also dehydrate them that way. Just don't do garlic, onions, um, anything like that has a really strong, not very pleasant smell. Rosemary is a very pleasant smell, but garlic and onions is not. Okay, here was my other, other cutting I'm just going to take that I grew. I'm just going to take a few snippings from this. And I'm done. Okay, that's all in here. I have some oregano outside in my raised bed that has done great. So I'm just going to run and go grab that. So here's my oregano plant in the bed that doesn't do so hot. But my oregano does amazing here. So oregano is also very easy to um, harvest. Uh, one thing I will tell you about oregano is it shoots off long parts of this plant and if it gets attached to the ground, it will root itself and make a whole nother plant. So a lot of these that are all around here are from the pieces of top plants that have come down and have formed roots there and then they just made new plants. So, I'm going to come in here and harvest down low. And I can tell that my plant is wanting to go to seed. I don't want it to go to seed right now, so I'm going to go ahead and take a lot of those that I see off and um, see if I can keep it from going to seed right now. Now, before this season is over, I probably will let this thing go to seed. Um, you know, it will reproduce by seed and just by reaching out and making basically new run, new, the little runners that will make I can see, I can feel this one that's, you can see that little dip. If that goes in the ground, it will, this right here will automatically start forming roots in the soil. It's really a cool thing to watch. Um, so it does re reproduce pretty easy. Um, when I bought this plant, it was really little. Um, and you can see that it has just grown tremendously um, since last year. Is Either last year or the year before. I think it was last year when I bought this plant. Okay. 
Okay, so I've taken a pretty good bit from this plant right now. So I'm just going to um, call it done on this. And I'll let some of these little ones that are growing up on the sides, I'm just going to let those grow up and just harvest in here on this main plant. And um, this is also really good herb to use on your meats. I really enjoy using this. Also, I use basil, parsley, and oregano dried, and I could, I'll just crumble it up on my hands and put it on homemade dips. Um, so you can put it in soups. There's so much you can do with herbs. So I really enjoy my herbs. I want to show you something, this marigold right here. There's just, I feel like so much to know, so much to learn that some people may not know. This marigold right here has a dead head on it. So I'm going to pull it off and I want to show you what's in there. Um, here in the shade it has gotten really hot. Um, so just trying to get out of the sun. But these little dead flower heads on the marigolds, I used to pick them off, chunk them on the ground, give my plant, let my plant put more energy into the rest of the uh, flowers and everything. So this little black part on the top has seeds under it. All you have to do is squeeze that little long part under the flower and you have seeds. All those seeds. So here's another one. There's a little long part on the bottom. I'm just cracking that open and there's seeds. So I have literally a handful of seeds from that marigold plant, or that, excuse me, those few little flowers. Um, I can make a whole lot more marigold plants just from that, those few little flower heads. And like I said, I used to pick those off and throw them down. But now that I know where the seeds are at, um, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to be wasteful with, for those, with those. Um, so there's absolutely no moisture in these whatsoever. But if you decide to pick them like the morning it rained or it rained a lot the day before, just make sure your plants are really good and dry. There's no moisture. Mine cracked right open with no moisture at all. If you have moisture, just put them up in the window seal inside um, in the sun and let them dry out for a few days. Store them in a Ziploc bag, brown paper sack. You can use the little baby food if you have any leftover baby food glass um, jars or old jelly jars, whatever you have. Store them in there and you have a whole new set of marigolds all for free. Happy homesteading, y'all.